Good evening. Uh, we're trying to set up here for a Monday night Bible study for our Kaiser Church group. Uh, for those who will be joining along, uh, we also have uh, trying to get some things established for those that uh, have reported that uh, the sermons on Sunday on the live stream from Facebook um, is that they're they're breaking up and that uh, the video and the audio is kind of fading in and out. So. Uh, we want you to know that even though we're live streaming, this is also being recorded uh, on the iPad and we're uploading that. And I know there's no breakage on, on the uh, YouTube videos uh, with the iPad. So uh, if you want to follow along and the, the, the signal is breaking in and out, uh, go ahead and text us. You can message on this or text me and let me know, hey, yeah, the, the audio and the video is breaking up, but um, the YouTube is not going to have any breakage. And we went back and looked at the ones that we saved uh, for uh, Sunday, and even though there was glitches that you could catch, there was no breakage of the audio in that. So even though the live stream may be breaking up uh, for some of you, <clears throat> as you've reported, um, the, the YouTube video, if you can find that, go on to YouTube, just type in search Dan Beiser and you, my channel should come up and I'm uploading those as we finish, uh, each broadcast. So Saturday night, um, prayer meeting that we did, both services from yesterday that we did, um, Kaiser Church and Fox's Hall of Church, all those are uploaded. And as soon as we get done uh, this, we'll, we'll be uploading this later tonight for the Bible study. So church family's getting on. We're glad to have you guys with us. Um, make sure that, again, if you need anything, questions, or if you've got anything just to share, you can either, if you private message, that's fine. Uh, if you want to uh, type on here, I've got uh, half the family in here. They're watching that, that they can follow along with that as well. So uh, Monday night for our Kaiser group, we always do Bible study at seven o'clock. Uh, we've got other groups through the week uh, that are getting on and um, uh, One Cry, which is gathering a good many, is praying on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, and that's generally Eastern Standard Time, that's eight o'clock. Uh, the other one, Brian Alred, is uh, doing uh, Pray America and they're doing that uh, They've been praying, they wanted to pray for 21 straight days and that was always at 714 every evening. And uh, so those are some prayer initiatives that are happening in the evening. Uh, if you wanna get on and follow along with them, uh, if you need those addresses or, or that information to, to know those groups, I'll be glad to pass that along to you as well. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is that we're just trying to maintain some kind of normalcy uh, for our regular services and for the churches. And uh, for those who are isolating or, you know, self-isolating, quarantining themselves, um, and that you're just staying in, and again, we're not gathering as the churches, so pretty much our only means right now is through social media. And uh, so the live stream with Facebook is easy and accessible for most, uh, although I think everybody at Kaiser has it, uh, but Fox's Hollow, we only have half of them uh, have access to that. Uh, the other thing is, again, that the recording for the YouTube videos, uh, that they are just the same thing as the live stream. I'm running both of them, and so when you see me turn my head, I'm, I'm looking at both uh, instead of at the same time uh, with that. So uh, we're glad that you've gotten on and that you're going to follow along. Uh, we've got reports from others that have joined us around the community as well. Uh, I've heard from other people uh, across the nation that have said that they've gotten on and I see some of the names as you all pop up there and it's good to have you um, and uh, that you can join along with us. Now again, uh, we're trying to split this as much as we can for our, our Bible study on Monday night. Uh, again, normally we go around uh, for an opportunity just to share where's everybody at, spiritually uh, speaking. Uh, for Bible readings, and again, this is most important as I touched on yesterday in, in the sermons, um, you're getting ready to close out March. And so this one-third or the first three months uh, that puts us for 
um, this first part of the year, going into April now, it's to be looking at what have I got done? Uh, what have I not got done? What, do I, what am I being pressed to do right now? And again, maintaining your spiritual disciplines uh, is ever so important for what we're facing right now. And again, because family, friends, people that you're online with, chit-chit-chatting, and people always have uh, their two senatorial comments, and they always have this and that that they want to uh, do, it, it, it's becoming more real to people uh, where we're at and what's going on. Now, it's not to undermine that, again, uh, how long this is going to last, and that, as, you, as I said Saturday and, and in the services yesterday, uh, I did not foresee um, the churches getting back together till Mother's Day. Um, and I passed that along to mainly Fox's Hollow. Um, and then again, as you saw President Trump, that this was pushed back to April the 30th. So uh, they're beginning to see about the same, same kind of pattern. Um, states around us, Maryland, Virginia, uh, closed down the borders and, and uh, unless it's absolutely necessary and essential to get out, uh, nobody's to go, and uh, West Virginia, no doubt, will adopt that here before too long. Uh, so again, our opportunity uh, to worship and to draw together uh, is via this this uh, avenue. So uh, again, wanting to know if you can share, want to share where you're at, what you're doing while you're uh, isolated in. Uh, again, it's a limitation on what you're going to spend your time on because uh, we're not going to be ripping and running and other uh, uh, things to get done like that. So again, in the evenings, and especially if you're there during the day, uh, to incorporate more time uh, to, to grow in the Lord and to grow closer to the Lord. Uh, so with your Bible readings, a devotional, uh, some of these little classics that I've shared numerous times, Pilgrim's Progress, Fox's Book of Martyrs, um, the biographies of some of the great saints. This is the time to uh, take advantage of this while, while your time is restricted from, from going and just being able to read some of those. But again, the biggest thing, again, is our focus is prayer right now. Uh, the nations have been called to give an account uh, for what's going on. It's just two things that, again, for me, that I'm going to be laying out uh, for this week. Um, and one of those is, is that uh, uh, cause them to know their abominations and calling for the solemn assembly. Um, these two things are going to be absolutely necessary for the church's response uh, as soon as this kind of breaks or during the days that we're, uh, for the month of April, that we're going to be in. Um, so the idea of this, again, for our Bible study on Monday nights, we're walking through the book of Exodus. Uh, we got up through Exodus chapter 14. So if you have your Bibles and want to open up, this is where we're going to be going. Um, again, I know that live stream and those kind of things, if uh, you, you have a question, uh, and again, normally I begin with that. Anybody have any questions, anything you want to ask or talk about, uh, to give them that moment. And, and so again, if you have that, you can go ahead and type that out and write it and send it. And as I said, the kids and Georgie's here uh, with me in the room, and so they'd be able to relay that to me. Uh, but if there's not, then we get right into the study with the scriptures, uh, and then we'll spend the last part of our time uh, for prayer. And again, I want to give you the prayer targets. I want to give you some of the things that we're hearing and seeing that's going on, uh, and again, be able to lift that up for the Lord, even though we're apart, still praying uh, together. So that's our opportunities here on Bible study nights on Monday. Uh, Thursday night, again, probably going to do another prayer meeting, which again, it'll just be the prayer targets and we'll have that time. And whether that's us praying here corporately, like we had did last week, uh, or whether I just present to you those things and, and kind of walk you through that, uh, we'll, we'll make that decision as we get closer to Thursday and then Saturday night as well, again, uh, at seven o'clock. Uh, I know that this 7 o'clock hour is when a lot of other things are happening and people are coming in as it's getting darker, and so they're getting on, and then the system gets a little bit overloaded. Uh, but we're just going to deal with that as we can, okay? So starting in the book of Exodus, any questions that anybody sent? Mm -hmm. Nobody's okay. given us any yet. All right. 
Well, those of you that are posting that you're watching with us and you're with us, I see some of that and so glad to have you with us. Um, and again, uh, for the study is in Exodus chapter 14 and we had just closed out in chapter 13 that the children of Israel, uh, after the 10 plagues, uh, that they had uh, exit, they were exiting out of, of Egypt and again, the death plague had left Pharaoh and the leaders and the people of Egypt uh, in decimation because, again, not only had the natural resources been devoured and destroyed by God's judgments, but now their own homes. And uh, we talked exclusively with that, that when you get to that last plague, uh, it's always death. And that's the same thing as, and again, uh, not that we timed it that way, but that's the way that it is with what we're facing right now. And uh, so again, uh, getting ready for that last judgment because God says, I've tried everything else to get your attention and to give you warnings and, and you refuse to hear. But as he said, I am going to bring my children of Israel out of Egypt and I'm gonna do it with a mighty hand. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened and so that these things continue to progress. Uh, so now they are exiting and they are leaving uh, out out of the uh, Egypt to go to the promised land. And again, the last thing that we covered and the last thing that we touched at the end of chapter 13 is the way that God did it. And it was the significance of the uh, cloudy pillar during the day and a fiery pillar at night. And wherever that pillar led, they were supposed to follow in obedience. And again, that same imagery uh, for, the church, for the Christian is the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit leads us. And again, when we are in tune with him, uh, our ears are immediately know his voice. Our eyes see the directive and the opportunities are there. Uh, as Christians grow, uh, and again, for spiritual babes that are not as uh, familiar with that, uh, they miss a lot of that. And so that after the fact, they'll say, oh, that was God prompting me. That was God's Holy Spirit speaking to me. Uh, and again, the more that you practice with that listening and, and knowing, uh, again, it becomes more familiar to you. So in this, when we start in chapter 14 of Exodus, uh, God is not done yet with his judgment upon Egypt. Uh, and again, we're, we're working in Exodus from chapter 1 to chapter 20 to get up to the Ten Commandments. And so again, we're, we're over halfway, of course, but uh, in these chapters here, we're going to begin to see some of the things that are happening uh, of God of the children of Israel with their murmuring, complaining, it begins and starts and lasted 40 years. Um, we're going to see again in this, this chapter is that chapter 14, God's not done with his judgment on, on Pharaoh in Egypt. And so as the children of Israel has left, God again leading them exactly where he wants them to go and to set up camp. And so in chapter 14, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, uh, that they turn and that they encamp before Pahiroth, and between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before it, sh before it you shall encamp by the sea. Now God is, again, in specifics. Uh, for most people, they wouldn't think anything about this, but because you, you know the rest of this chapter, is that everything is going to come into uh, position here. The children of Israel are up against the water, the Red Sea, and they cannot go forward. So God positions them there so that when the Egyptians begin to approach them, is that he's going to do this miraculous miracle of opening the Red Sea and the children of Israel crossing on dry land. But the biggest thing is, is that he's going to cause Pharaoh and the Egyptians to follow after, and he's going to bring final judgment. And again, final judgment, as we've said, is death. And so that they will be swallowed up by the sea and they will be drowned in the midst of this. But before this happens, this great miracle, we're going to watch the children of Israel. Now, again, God positioned them there. So again, does God make mistakes or does God uh, cause error? Absolutely not. So he does everything for a reason. That's the reason that you can say in your life, there is no chance, there is no luck, there is no coincidence. Everything is by design and our choices in this matter. So when you are positioned at a particular job or in a relationship 
or with friends or the background of your upbringing, that is not by accident. And again, when you consider uh, what God has done in our life, it is really overwhelming. And again, I use this, and so some of the from the church uh, have heard me go through this many times over. It was not an accident uh, that, again, that I was born in this, in this generation, nor you. It was not an accident that I was born in a Christian home and I heard the gospel and had praying parents and that prayed for me and, and instructed me in the good and the right. But that's not an accident. That, that's God's directive in that. Because again, God could just as have easily caused of me to be born in Saudi Arabia or in some other, uh, in India and been with Hindus or Buddhists or uh, Muslim and Islam. And I never would have had the opportunity to hear the gospel as verily as I would have. So God directed my life. I, I see this, that he would bring me to the opportunity not only to hear the gospel, but to respond to the gospel. And again, your salvation, for those of you that are listening that are saved, you can count that same blessing. God directed you to go and encamp in this particular place in your life with the people that you're with. Now, again, when we step outside of God's will and we make choices that are not right, that's when we cause chaos and sin. And, and we normally, again, everything has repercussions from it. Our choices matter. And so, again, when people walk contrary to God's will, um, then that, those are the circumstances and situations that they find themselves in. So understanding this is that, again, God is directing the children of Israel in this particular place because he's getting ready to do something to manifest his glory again. And you and I have to see that same thing in our lives as well. He is directing circumstances and situations, and they may not always be the best. Uh, they're, they're most of the saints, and again, for us, is that we ought to learn those verses that Jesus said, if I suffered, so you shall suffer. And again, for the persecution that we see other churches and Christians going through around the world as we see uh, what families are facing in this, in this crisis hour, uh, Paul writes that in Corinthians, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 1, where he says uh, that again, for we go through things so that when others go through it, that we may be able to minister to them. And, and so again, as we've related this so often to uh, the plague that's on us right now, the, the epidemic and the pandemic, is that, again, <clears throat> most of us are going to walk through this with family members or ourselves. We're going to have to. So spiritually, mentally, and in our hearts and our souls, we got to get ready, not only for ourselves, if this would be our death, but when we have to go through the valley of the shadow of death with others. But it is not uh, by coincidence, luck, or chance that this just happens to one and not another. It is by design. And so understanding that God is directing things for a reason. And again, we, we looked at that Saturday night uh, with our prayer time as Esther said, uh, Mordecai said to Esther, for such a time as this, uh, that's why we're here. And that's why we do Bible study. And that's why we encourage the spiritual disciplines. And that's the reason that I'm so dogmatic on pre prevailing prayer is because this is where we're at. And God wants to use us because he has positioned us, encamped us in our respective places. And again, I see uh, Georgia, uh, Maryland, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, uh, Texas, uh, all responding here in this mm -hmm. uh, for the names that I see. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, a good half dozen states that are represented just on this small Bible study. This, there's a purpose that God is bringing us through this time of death uh, right now for our nation and the nations. And what comes after this, he's still going to get the glory. Uh, everything, again, is always about God's glory. And so he makes them encamp by the Red Sea. And in verse 3, now again, his response to the enemies of his people and the enemies towards himself, Pharaoh and the Egyptians, verse 3, he says, For Pharaoh will save the children of Israel. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. 
and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all of his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they, and they did so. So again, God is telling, uh, God's telling Moses that again, go tell the people of Israel, this is why I'm doing this. I'm not done judging Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They're going to see that you're up against the sea. They're going to say to themselves, they've ensnared themselves. Now let's go finish them off. And again, this phrase, and we've looked at this in our Bible study. And so I see well over half of you that of course haven't been with us in Bible study. When in verse three, when he says that, that he says that, or verse four, where he says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And that question had been asked multiple times. And again, many people in the church ask this question. Uh, isn't God taking away his opportunity of invitation and by hardening his heart? And again, to, to explain that quickly uh, before we move on here is that when God hardens a man's heart against himself is that God already knows what that man's heart is. Uh, again, God is omniscient, all-knowing. God is omnipresent, past, present, and future. Uh, and he already knows. He knows, again, before the foundation of the world was formed, he knew those that would, that would come to him and submit, surrender themselves, submit themselves to him. And he also knows those that would be rebellious and hard-hearted and hard-headed. And again, you and I do not know that, but God does. So therefore, our responsibility is to pray Tell and again, as Spurgeon said it, I will pray for the lost until I don't have any breath left or until they don't have any breath left. And I will to us to be faithful to continue to give them invitations over and over again because eternity's coming for everybody. But again, you and I do not know those that harden themselves and that there is no opportunity that God knows is that they will never come to him. Uh, and again, is God just in his judgment? He gives every man opportunity, but he knows the will of man, the soul of man, whether they will be with him or not. And so again, this is where Pharaoh was. He says to Pharaoh, I raised you up because I knew that you would be rebellious against me and harden yourself against me and walk away from me. And I'm going to use this that I can show and demonstrate to the world. And again, here we are, uh, this time period was about 1500 BC, and here we are 2000. So 3,500 years ago, uh, this was all unfolding, and we're still talking about it and its relevance to us today. Men's hearts are hard against him, just like Pharaoh. And again, God brings us, the church, Christians, uh, the symbolism of this is just incredible to the New Testament salvation. Uh, as he brought Israel out of Egypt to bring them into the promised land, so he brings us out of the world, out of sin, and prepares us that we may enter into our promised land, Beulah land, into, uh, to, into heaven, into the celestial city. So it is the same imagery of, of this in Exodus that it is for the church, uh, the same thing. And so again, what can we say when God directs us and God blesses us with grace and mercy? Praise your name, Father. Thank you. That, again, I am not, as Pharaoh, in my heart, un, uh, hard and unmovable towards you. You and I know people like this. We, we pray and weep over our loved ones that are like this, crying out to God constantly. Oh, God, soften their heart. Oh, God, let them open up uh, that they would not harden themselves, deafen their ears and saying, I don't care what you say. I'm going to live life for myself, and I'm going to do what I want. And when we get to our... <clears throat> prayer targets here at the end. Uh, I'll share another word on that because for most people today, and again, if your experience is different in this, praise the Lord. But my experience at work for last week and today is that most people, most people have not humbled themselves before the Lord. Most people, uh, that they are not uh, ready and receptive to these things. So uh, there's no fear of God. Uh, if I die in this, I die in this. And again, you know, well, I don't care uh, how many thousands. This is no different than people that are dying from the other flu and, and other issues that are happening. And all that's true. And all the, that is the reality of this. But this has come on so hastily and it's growing so fast 
that again, men and women and children are being swept out into eternity. And again, the time of opportunity to witness to them uh, is, it's missing, it's, it's gone. And so you and I are in this opportunity right now to understand uh, that men's hearts are hard and to be seeking God, begging with God. Again, we don't know who the elect is, who the chosen are, but praying with God so fervently uh, as you had pity on me, as you had grace on me, as someone prayed for me. So, oh, Father, I pray for them. But we'll come back to that uh, as, we, as we come to the close for our prayer time. So again, God hardens Pharaoh's heart because again, he knew that Pharaoh would reject and be rebellious. And so he's using him to demonstrate his power and his glory. And he uses that term at the end of verse four there, that all may know that I am the Lord. Now again, when you go looking for this, uh, it, this phrase, that they may know that I am the Lord, when you go over to the book of Ezekiel, and I think Ezekiel has... Um, multiple times, almost every chapter uh, that you can mark at through. And I remember when I went on a mission trip and I was uh, reading, and again, we was in flights uh, going to Europe and coming from the United States, and I remember vividly uh, that word study, and I have it marked still to this day in my Bible. But when you go through the book of Ezekiel, in your Bible readings, and you see that, that they may know that I am the Lord. And then you go over to the New Testament, and you have Christ saying that, that, Father, that they may know that you and I are one. That that reference there, that they may know. And again, for you and I as the church, we're supposed to be a light in this world of darkness, and that they may know that God is God. And they need to hear that from us and they need to see that in our lives. And so again, if we have fear and anxiety and impatience and all the characteristics of the world, then they don't see a difference between us and, and the heathen. And they must see in us a confidence, a faith, a boldness, patience. Again, understanding, this is not by accident. I, I'm not here by accident. He's directed me uh, for such a time as this. In your respective place to be a witness, my respective place to be a witness, that they may know that God is God. And again, if they don't hear it from anybody else, then they hear it from you and I. So in this opportunity that we have, this is the same thing. And so in verse 5, I'm only going to go a couple more verses and then we'll stop to focus on, on our prayer time. Verse 5, and so it was told that the king of Egypt, that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. Now, just another two chapters back, when you read that, the heart.